you have your videos turned off until we need you to turn them on. And Chair Lithin, if you could just give me a moment when you wanna start, let me know and I can have Miriam at the Senior Center start recording to channel one. Okay, uh, I see no reason to delay, so I think we're ready. Okay, I'm letting her know right now, just one moment. Okay, we are ready. Okay, uh, good evening and welcome to the San Bruno Planning Commission meeting for Tuesday, June 16th, 2020. Thank you for everyone for um, attending our second virtual meeting. Uh, please continue to be patient as we're still adapting to this new platform. Luckily, we again have some extra members of the San Bruno city staff who are helping us out tonight. And I'd like to say another big thank you to them for making this possible. Uh, to our fellow members of the public, please, uh, we want to hear from you. If you're in the audience and you would like to address the commission during public comment or during a public hearing for um, an item on the agenda, please use the raise your hand button uh, in your Zoom application. And when it's your turn to speak, the city clerk um, will call your name and she'll unmute you and you'll be given three minutes to uh, uh, address the commission. And if you're joining us by telephone, you can also address the commission during uh, public comment or hearing by pressing star nine. And again, the city clerk will address you and unmute you. You will also be given three minutes to address the commission. And uh, please note, um, anyone uh, in attendance may uh, speak once per agenda item. And then uh, a quick note for my fellow commissioners, uh, again, for clarity tonight during the meeting, we're going to do roll call votes for every item on the agenda. And we're going to be using a voice vote to close the public hearings. So just be prepared to motion and second and vote. Uh, with that, I think we're ready for the roll call, Pamela. Good evening. Okay, roll call. Chair Lithin. Here. Vice Chair Biasati. Here. Commissioner Morgan. Here. Commissioner Johnson. Mary Lou, you're a mute. Yes. You're here. Commissioner Harmon. Here. Commissioner Hamilton. Here. You have six members, you have a quorum. Great, thank you, Pamela. Um, now we are ready for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, our city clerk, Melissa, will now present the flag for the pledge and I'll go ahead and lead you. Okay. Uh, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, I think that went okay. <laughs> all right, um, so then we'll move into our business items and that's gonna start with the approval of the minutes and we have two minutes uh, to approve, uh, both the February 18th, 2020 with uh, the revisions made since our last meeting and then also the May 19th, 2020. Through the chair, I make a motion that we approve the minutes of February 18th and May 19th. Okay, is there a second? Second. The Go ahead, Mary. Second. Okay, um, all in favor, wait, roll call vote. Okay. I'll do it. Commissioner Thanks. Hamilton? Aye. Commissioner Harmon? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Morgan? Aye. Vice Chair Biasati? Aye. Chair Lathan? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, thank you. And then uh, second will be public comment. And this is an opportunity for members of the public to speak about topics that are not on tonight's agenda. Um, Melissa, uh, if you could just give it a moment and let us know if there are any hands raised that would like to speak. Currently, there are no hands raised. However, if any member of the public would like to speak, 
at the bottom of your screen or sometimes at the top, if you're using an Apple product, you should see an icon to raise your hand, if you could press that. If you're calling in by phone, which I do see that we have a phone caller, you can press star nine. And I see no hands. Okay. Well, there'll be another opportunity at the end of the meeting if anybody would like to uh, make public comments. So we'll go ahead and move on from that. Do we need to close that, Melissa? Are we good? No, public comment does not need to be closed. Okay, thank you. Um, in that case, uh, we have um, announcements of conflict of interest. Are there any commissioners who need to recuse themselves for any items? Uh, I need to recuse myself for the, for the Cortland item. Okay, great. We'll keep that in mind when that comes up. Thank you, Commissioner. For clarification, that's for item 4B on the agenda. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, in that case, we'll just move into the uh, public hearing items and we will um, do public hearing item 4A, which is the Stratford School conditional use permit at 201 Balboa Way. And uh, we are ready for a staff report. Great, one moment and I will share my screen. All right, good evening everyone. My name is Kelly Beggs and I'm a contract senior planning planner for the city of San Bruno and I'm pleased to present the item before you tonight, which is a request for an architectural review permit and use permit to renovate the former El Cristal Elementary School as a private preschool and kindergarten pursuant to sections 12.108010A and 12.9660C1 of the San Bruno Municipal Code. This slide shows what we'll be discussing this evening. I'll start with the existing conditions, describe the proposed project, environmental review, neighborhood outreach and public comment, and then move on to tonight's action. This slide presents um, the aerial of the existing conditions. The project is located at 201 Balboa Way. And as you can see, it's surrounded to the south, um, southwest and east by single family residential neighborhoods. Um, and then is also located adjacent to San Bruno City Park. The former El Cristal Elementary School had no internal vehicular site circulation um, and all three roads that led to it dead ended with parking at the end. So here you can see Balboa Way, Anza Way, and then San Felipe Avenue also um, dead ended into the site. This slide presents photographs of the site shown from those parking areas, starting with Balboa Way on the top left. Then below that is the view from Anza Way, and you can see how the slide slopes down um, in that direction towards San Bruno City Park. Um, and then the view from San Felipe Avenue is shown um, on the right side. This slide presents the demolition plan. Uh, much of the demolished areas would accommodate the school's proposed parking areas, which will hold 83 spaces in the northwestern portion of the lot um, that would be used for parents and students and 37 in the lower uh, southeastern portion of the lot. The school will support approximately 348 students, 35 faculty members and staff. Um, the existing main area, uh, main building would be expanded by 3,368 square feet to include three additional classrooms. Um, and this would result in approximately 459 square foot net increase over existing conditions. Um, and that is because the uh, accessory structures um, to the bottom right of your screen are proposed to be demolished. So once again, um, demolition here to, accom to accommodate new parking areas um, and a new driveway and then demolition um, down here at the bottom right corner to accommodate another uh, parking area. So now you can see a little bit more of what I'm talking about uh, in terms of the, how the site is proposed for circulation. This is the larger 83 space parking lot, which would be meant for parents and guardians um, to park and drop off children. And I'll also point out that 
the kindergarten students would be dropped off and there are a lot fewer kindergarten students than preschoolers. Preschoolers, the drop off mode would be that parents would park in this parking lot and then walk children in. And then the parking lot that you see down here is intended to be used only for staff. Um, so once again, parents would enter here and either park or uh, go to the loading zone and then they would exit through a new driveway that leads out on, onto San Felipe Avenue. This slide shows a little bit more about the circulation plan. Um, so you can see where the, how many cars could stack in here and queue. And then we've actually also worked with the applicant on an enhanced striping plan um, due to some public concerns about queuing. And so I'll show that in the next slide here. Um, so the change that's indicated here um, from what was reviewed by the ARC is that we would actually be accommodating two car, two lanes of cars, still all one way. So only one way in from Balboa, but parents of kindergartners could use the right lane to drop off and then parents of preschoolers um, could use the left lane here to prevent any backup or um, bottleneck. This slide shows proposed elevations. Um, the new areas you can see are these uh, slightly taller uh, shed roofs. And these are three courtyards that are being filled in um, to add the new classrooms. This slide shows the proposed landscape plan. 28 heritage trees are proposed for removal and 47 replacement trees are included as part of the proposed project. And in response to comments from uh, neighbors and residents, um, the applicant has added four additional trees here to screen a, a retaining wall uh, from San Bruno City Park. The city has prepared an initial study and mitigated negative declaration pursuant to the California Environmental Quality Act. No significant and unavoidable impacts were identified and mitigation measures were identified um, to address potentially significant impacts to air quality, biological resources, cultural resources, hazards and hazard materials, and noise. Um, I will note that this project did use VMT as the threshold for significance for the transportation analysis, and that is vehicle miles traveled, um, which cities are required to start using starting this July. Um, the city did prepare a level of service analysis, which looks at intersections and their function under proposed project conditions. Um, and that is for informational purposes, but all intersections were found to continue to function at or above acceptable level of service. This slide shows different um, public meetings that have been held um, for the project. We did receive nine comments from six residents during the public comment period for the environmental document. Um, that comment period was open from May 6th through May 26th. On May 7th, the applicant hosted a community outreach meeting that staff attended. On May 14th, the ARC meeting was held and the ARC did give this project a favorable recommendation um, to the Planning Commission. Uh, and then on June 5th, the Planning Commission public notice was sent to all residents within a 600 foot radius of the project site. Um, and throughout the course of this uh, process, staff has received comments that I'll uh, group into three topic areas. First, um, continued access to San Bruno City Park um, and the aesthetics of the park due to the changes in the addition of the new drive aisle. Um, next, construction impacts related to parking traffic, noise, vibration, and hazardous materials. And then lastly, operational traffic um, related to uh, concerns about congestion and speeding on neighborhood streets that uh, the project would be accessed from. Um, so I'll go a little bit um, into the responses to the public comments. Uh, any public comments that were received during the period uh, for the environmental document are um, included in a memo that was prepared by the environmental consultant with formal responses to all of those comments. Um, I'll just summarize those briefly here. 
So in terms of this access to city park um, and the aesthetics, as I mentioned earlier, four trees have been added to screen the retaining wall. There's additional landscaping that screens the retaining wall. Um, and then there's also additional staff review that will be required prior to issuance of building permits to uh, verify the quality of materials and design. Access to City Park will be maintained during construction and operation of the project, and that is a condition of approval on the project. Um, traffic queuing and congestion have been brought up by several neighbors, and staff has worked with the applicant to provide that extra lane of travel at the entrance to the student parking area that I mentioned earlier in the circulation plan. And then we will also require an additional plan prior to building permit issuance that includes all striping signage and staffing to be provided. Um, next pickup and drop off will be staggered for the school. So not all students will arrive at any one time. In addition, because this is a preschool and not a traditional elementary school, students naturally come and go at different times of the day because there's an extended day program, half day program, so different um, different programs that people can enroll in that distribute the trips further. Um, and that will be a condition of approval. Staff monitors are required to be present at the pickup and drop off periods. And th that is to direct traffic and prevent any queuing into the right of way. The applicants also required to send informational documents to educate parents and guardians on drop off and pickup procedures. Um, Lastly, several neighbors have requested traffic calming measures to be implemented into the right of way. These improvements would go through a separate process with the Traffic Safety and Parking Committee and staff has connected residents with Public Works Department to guide them through that process. Lastly, construction impacts um, have been addressed by requiring the const construction true crew to be parked on site and that would be um, parking impacts for neighbors who are concerned about contractors using street parking, but the applicant has agreed to stage construction so that all parking for construction crews would be contained. Um, a noise control plan is required, which includes limitations on construction hours to weekdays from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Um, and then a condition of approval would further limit noise intensive construction activities to 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Wednesdays, on weekdays. The noise control plan also includes elements like equipment mufflers, noise barriers, um, and measures requiring that station, stationary equipment is located as far away as possible from residences. So this slide presents tonight's actions. I am available to answer any questions that you may have, um, and the applicant will also provide a short presentation. So I will hand this over to Kartik Patel for a moment. Thank you very much, Kelly. Thank you, commissioners, for allowing us to present our project. We are very excited of all the work that's gone in, and we look forward to a successful approval and completion of the project. Uh, we all wanted to personally thank the staff for helping us go through this process. It's been a long road, and we look forward to uh, presenting the project, and hopefully uh, it is attractive and we get the project approved today. Uh, <clears throat> Kelly, thank you for doing a wonderful description. So I'll limit my presentation to a short introduction uh, for the project. And uh, we'll be here to field any questions that you may have for us. Uh, as you can see, the challenge of this project has been parking and site circulation. Uh, and we've addressed that, which Kelly went through uh, in detail of what <clears throat> will be done on the project. Uh, so I think uh, the site was the challenge and we feel that the solution that we've presented is a good one, which will div uh, divert the traffic on three different streets and it'll allow a one-way circulation that would be uh, very easy and easy to traverse on. Uh, as far as the building is concerned, we are gonna refurbish the building from all aspects of code and modernize it. We have uh, planned on taking the two existing uh, classroom buildings that are, that are at the top of the hill off of Anza Way, and uh, we are gonna replace those 
with uh, the three pods that we are adding onto the existing campus, which is at the bottom of the hill. Uh, the building materials are stucco. Uh, the new pods will have a standing seam metal roof on it, and they are elevated so that we can properly flash uh, the new additions. Uh, with that, I would leave the presentation and uh, will field any questions that you may have. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm gonna, as there's no more uh, staff reports specifically, so we can uh, move to uh, commission qu clarifying questions. Do any commissioners have clarifying questions for the applicant or staff? To the chair, I have yes. one. Um, I, I uh, was on the, the ARC, so I, this is the second time seeing this. I very much appreciate the steps um, taken in the plan to um, uh, uh, make two lanes coming in on, from Balboa and uh, removing those two vehicles from Balboa. That's um, a, a significant improvement for the neighborhood and I appreciate that very much. Um, regarding referring the um, you know, possible traffic calming for Balboa and, or any of the other streets, uh, to the TSPC, um, I don't. I don't necessarily think it's ne it's the, the the right process is to tell the neighbors how to go to the TSPC. I think I think the city should just put that on the agenda for the TSPC to take a look at. It's not you know they may they may decide to take no action. They may have recommendations and and I I think it would just be it would be much friendlier to the um, surrounding neighborhood if we just simply put it on the agenda for the TSPC to look at um, at a at a future meeting rather than have the uh, have a neighbor have to go through that whole process. As a member of the TSPC for a very long time, it can take months or years to get an, uh, something onto the agenda. Um, if so, that, that was, that's just one recommendation I have. Yes, and we have been working closely with the Public Works Department on that. Um, and given the current um, circumstances in the pandemic right now, uh, there aren't meetings scheduled. Um, but I can, uh, I believe that the city engineer is on the call um, and can talk a little bit about um, how that, how we are facilitating getting that on the agenda. Hi, um, good evening, Haywan Ritchie, city engineer, public works um, for the city. Good evening, everybody. Um, I can take that. I know that um, the process has been longer, but we have committed, and in fact, um, before COVID happened, we had actually planned to take um, you know, some clarifications and some additional community engagement process to the um, TSPC, and that happened to be the April. And then, as we know, you know, early March, um, all of our plans sort of went out the window. We do still plan on having that meeting it, um, when our TSPC meetings do resume, and I think we're still trying to figure out some of the logistics on that. But um, it may not be the first meeting that goes back to TSPC, that, but we do plan on going back for the second meeting after meetings resume to clarify that process. Because what we do want to do is in include the community, because I think what history has shown, you know, other lessons learned is that if we proceed with traffic calming measures and the community, you know, especially the residents that are nearby, don't want it or don't have a say in it, then it usually doesn't end up going very well. So we really want to include you know that community engagement portion and um it is in our on our docket to be occurring you know soon after we start resuming meetings and i have actually been in touch with um someone on balboa and we've stopped uh, we've spoken and you know he's um you know offered to take that item once you know we ironed out the process and i told him how we could be involved with the process of um setting the process so um, you know, I'm definitely encouraging the homeowner participants and resident participation because I think in order to have it be successful, we really do need to include them. Great, thank you. So it sounds like the process is already underway, so that's great. And I, I absolutely was not advocating that this that the meeting for the TSPC needs to take place now or even within the next three, four, or five months. You know, this, the construction is going to be taking a while, and um, you know, there's there's plenty of time to do it once everything resumes. So. That's that's great. Thank you. Yes, yes, we plan to take it, you know, um, concurrently as, as soon as we're able to. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, from the chair. Yes. Okay. Um, question for the applicant. Um, I operated a site 
on that on uh, Al Crystal. Um, my last time there was 2000, about 10 years ago. Uh, but I was there for eight years. And so I really got to feel every component of the building, the traffic, the, all the environment. And the key thing, the question that I have is, um, the tra I really am pleased with the traffic flow. I mean, it's a huge difference to be able to have that coming in and going out a different direction. Has there been a study to what that's going to do to San Felipe? Because San Felipe is a very tiny street and the flow of that and which direction. And also, this, I believe the street, the street, um, the first street after the school, it might be Cyprus. I just, I don't remember exactly. Um, but it's a very narrow street. So the, even though they say there's gonna be staggered hours, the reality is because I ran uh, private preschools, a large preschool uh, for over 40 years, there is a very designated time when kids come in. So they might have early bird, late bird, and, get, and you, know, you have all those layers, but your heaviest traffic is between 7.30 and 8.30. The preschool children will come in somewhere between, some will come as early as seven if those are the hours, but typically it's a 7.30 to 8.30, and most schools don't start later than nine o'clock. And so 8.45 is what I'd expect the schedule to be close to, and then at nine o'clock classes kick in. So the, the impact on San Felipe and the direction of the flow of traffic, can you speak to that? Perfect, shall I? Yes. Yeah. Sean Morley, everybody. I'm one of the project team members. Thanks for having us this evening. Um, I, it, it's really a two-part question, uh, both on-site as, as well as off-site. There was an extensive traffic study commissioned by the city through the CEQA process, um, which looked carefully both at level of service as well as a number of operational issues, um, and some recommendations came out of that. Um, that we incorporated in the project. But with respect to offsite, or excuse me, onsite, um, and I may not be the best person to answer that question with respect to the total uh, extent of the CEQA study. I, I think there are a couple of consultants on who can answer that, although I'm, I'm happy to provide some, some commentary on it. With respect to onsite, um, I, you noted rightly, um, especially with preschool, it, it's a slightly different experience in terms of drop-off um, than it would be for an elementary school or even historically what was happening when it was a public school. Um, so uh, children will, uh, their families will um, park and walk the children in for preschools. That creates a different flow pattern than a typical elementary school drop-off, which has much more of a surge, if you will. Um, we've also, between parking as well as queuing on site, have the capacity for about 120 cars, uh, which is consistent with the pattern of flow for the traffic for the, the, the key drop off hour, which is actually an extended period of time. And so we do believe that, it, especially over historical environment, the, the flow will be um, much smoother, both coming into the site as well as out, because cars will not be making reverse turns on any of the roads um, at the drop-off, which will be very helpful. And so th that should help from an operational standpoint. Um, and it, the traffic study that the city did, did look at dispersion patterns um, once uh, cars were coming off-site um, and was generally, I think, found to be consistent with all city policies in terms of level of service as well. From an operational standpoint, Stratford um, it obviously it runs a number of campuses. One in San Bruno has a lot of experience on the operational side, including on-site staff who are responsible for traffic operations, including communications both inbound at the drop-off as well as outbound to make sure that um, traffic flow is being properly metered um, so that we're not creating any undue queuing off-site coming into the site or into the stream of traffic on um, uh, San Felipe. It, I'm hoping that answered your question. If um, it may be helpful to have this, the traffic consultant, if, if that would be beneficial, potentially answer some of the additional question about offsite traffic, if well, you thought that might be useful. And also it's a very short space between the actual building and the street, Cypress. It's really short. The two it, homes it that are their, their garages almost can be part of Al Crystal's back door. I mean, it's that it, close. Uh, uh, a number of the, yeah, 
Yeah, a number of the neighbors, uh, I think one of them who owns one of those houses spoke uh, at our community meeting um, that we, we had uh, last month. Um, and we, we have, from a traffic control perspective, um, somebody who's on a, at that edge, um, you know, releasing cars so there's not actually from our site into that public right of way. And there's a little bit of a buffer there as well. Um, so it shouldn't be an uncontrolled flow. And we have such a long queuing pattern on site there uh, for the better part of 20 cars, even before you get to the parking lot, that that should provide, um, at least from an operational standpoint, Point, um, some flexibility to ensure that we're not backing up in front of those houses. And it will be a consistent flow for a period of time. It, it will be. Um, you're absolutely right. Um, Every single day. It, it is Stratford. Um, and so it requires two things. One, having a design that works. And we think we've accomplished that. From an operational standpoint, um, Stratford will a need to develop, uh, although we've already begun looking at it, but prior to opening a, a very um, specific operations plan that will need to be reviewed by uh, city staff and approved to make sure that we're um, implementing it in a way that makes sense. I, I would just say from a overall historical perspective, Stratford's had a very good experience operating um, on a number of campuses and um, devotes the resources necessary to do it right. Um, and it will, especially I think on the exiting of the site, um, because people will be going in direct, different directions, including on Cyprus, um, you know, and it may take a little fine tuning. Um, I think it's fair to say that uh, the experience that will occur on day one um, when the campus first opens um, will be different than the last day of the school year when parents have figured it out. Um, but we also won't be starting at full enrollment on day one either. Um, so we'll have a little time, I think, all to get it right. What is your time frame? Uh, the plan is, and we appreciate the commission undertaking um, the hearing um, uh, this evening. It allows us to file building permits um, if approved uh, a little later this summer with the expectation that presuming um, from a county health perspective, we can start construction, which would be sometime uh, um, staging on site in October and November, uh, and then a plan to open um, the, the full campus in August of 2021. Schools can only open one day a year, and so it's very important for us to try to hit that date. And um, just from a construction standpoint, um, uh, Stratford wants to do a couple of things. Um, one, uh, be very sensitive um, from an, uh, a construction standpoint um, for uh, our neighbors. Um, and that gives us enough time to do that uh, as well with the operating hours. And just in the post-COVID environment, um, the construction process and timing, um, everybody is still trying to figure out what all the requirements are going to be. So we want to leave ourselves enough time to, to do that right and not have to um, uh, work undue hours or anything uh, of the like. And we think the construction schedule, presuming we, we can start this fall, will leave us enough time to do that. The, the good news is it's primarily a modernization project. Um, there's not a lot of heavy construction occurring on site. Um, there are a little demolition of a couple of the buildings on the, on the upper parking lot and then addition of a couple of new ones. Um, but the, it's, um, we're hoping it will be a light and easy project for everybody. And especially we work very hard to make sure that from a construction standpoint, um, we can make sure that all the workers are on site and we have a room to move around with the creation of the parking areas. Will you be merging your uh, Crestmore school to this school? So um, Crestmore is uh, preschool uh, as well as uh, elementary and the, the intention is that they'll work um, uh, together and uh, we expect that many of the preschool students will end up on this campus. Um, and so, um, you know, the, we'll, we'll see some transition there um, clearly and then there's capacity for some uh, additional students as well. But this will operate primarily as a preschool with just a couple of kindergarten classes. And, and that is a different experience. Um, you know, parents are, uh, like I said, approaching a site very differently than it would just be on a drop off. And that walk in piece really paces people uh, through the site um, in an easier way and, uh, you know, doesn't allow for the, the, the more typical surge I think you were referring to um, when, when schools exiting typically. Thank you. 
Any other commission questions for staff for the applicant? Uh, a couple of comments. Um, uh, uh, Commissioner Morgan, we're gonna we're gonna wait for comments until um, after the public comment. But if you have anything anything you'd like to clarify, this no, is the time to ask staff. I'm good. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So if, if there are no cl more clarifying questions, um, then we can go ahead and open the public hearing. And uh, Melissa, uh, city clerk, will be looking for raised hands if there are any members of the public who'd like to speak on this item. And uh, as a reminder, each speaker will have three minutes uh, and we'll take all public comments at once and we'll address them after public comment is finished. I see one hand raised. It's Michael Fitzgerald. Just one moment while I bring you into the room. One moment, I'm trying to get Michael unmuted. Hi, Michael, can you hear us? I can. Okay, great. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, have an opportunity to speak. I'm on the corner of Santa Lucia and, um, uh, Oh brother, uh, the main street going in to uh, to the campus. What's the name of that street? I think Balboa Way. Thank you. I uh, I don't use that street very often, but I'm on the corner. And uh, in the past, we've had a lot of students uh, park on Santa Lucia and actually walk their kids up to the school because of the backup. I understand you've uh, worked on staggered times and you've worked on traffic uh, safety, but common sense to me seems if you're gonna throw that many students into a small area, there's gonna be a bottleneck. And my concern are the people who live on Balboa trying to come out to Santa Lucia to go to work and having a line of cars going in. And, and what's gonna happen to the traffic problems if and when they occur even though on paper you say they won't occur, if they do, what's the plan to fix it? And um, I think uh, if, if the school was smaller to begin with, you're not bringing kids from Crestmore down, it would have a better chance of being successful. So I think we should start with a much lower number than a higher number. It would make common sense to see if it works and then add the following semester or the following year to that number instead of doing it backwards and trying to figure out a way to fix it. Because when uh, you know people are heading to work, I don't care if they have to walk in or not, they race through the stop sign right here, all the neighbors see it, uh, to turn up to Balboa. They don't have a, a lot of time, they're gonna get out and you say that they're gonna be calm and just bring the kid in. No way, they're gonna be in a, a late half of them, be in a hurry, try and get to work. They're gonna have to back out of the parking lot, drop the kid off, get into the parking lot, then find a way to get out. And there's people way smarter than I am that have figured this out. I just ask you to tone it down, start slow and build up rather than starting with high numbers and trying to fix it at that point because it could be a disaster. So I just ask you to consider that and I'll uh, mute myself. Okay. Thank you, Michael, for, for sharing your comments. Um, do we have anybody else who would like to speak? I see no other hands raised. Okay. All right, well, in that case, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, close the public hearing. Um, would a commissioner like to motion to close the public hearing? I make a mo through the chair, I make a motion that we close the public hearing. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Okay, and then um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? Yeah, for that we can do a voice vote. We, oh, we, we gotta can... do a roll call. Yeah. Um, Pamela, no, for, for uh, the closing of a public hearing, we can just do a voice vote. It doesn't necessarily have to be a roll call vote for this. Oh, okay. All right. 
Okay, <laughs> in that case, uh, were there any opposed to closing it? Okay, there are none. Great, so um, public hearing is now closed. And um, we'll go ahead and bring the discussion back to the commission. And, um, and commissioners, would you like to share your thoughts, um, responses, questions? Yeah, um, just comments, a few comments. Uh, I think that the layout is a huge improvement on the existing one. Um, the surrounding roads are narrow, I agree with that, but um, especially San Felipe Way, Ave sorry, San Felipe Avenue. But I think that the one-way uh, drive-through system will help a lot with traffic flow. Um, like people reversing and trying to turn is what slows up traffic more than anything. So I think once they have a, a through flow, I think it's going to improve things immensely. Uh, I like the fact that they've introduced all the parking on site because it it's, avoids having to block people's driveways and so on, people parking the surrounding roads. Um, and I think that the um, uh, they have provided uh, bicycle parking, but I think they probably need to increase that because of the introduction of bicycle lanes around the vicinity and uh, the, the, more and more people are doing without cars. I think in the future they will, but that they, they could be added. And uh, I think the fact that the hours are staggered will help tremendously too. So that's about it. I think they've been pretty accommodating. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other commissioners? For the chair? Yes. Um, I also agree that I am so pleased to see this parking, this whole parking process in play, just the whole, um, not just the parking itself, but the whole process. It's gonna be a huge improvement to the community. And uh, uh, it will reduce by 50% the, those that are on, um, that are on, on Balboa. And uh, because they're only coming in and they're not going out in that direction before they were coming in and out, it will certainly increase by 100% on San Felipe. So it, that's you know, one of my concerns. The other question that I have to the applicant uh, is um, uh, if there was an emergency and those cars are in a queue, you know, has it been determined that, and I know this goes through the city and, in, and this is done well through the city, but if there was an emergency at that particular time when cars are in the queue, how does a fire engine, how does a police car, how does that happen? Uh, what provisions, uh, what discussions have been made to make, to take a look at that? You know, children run out. There's lots of things that could happen when there are children around specifically. And also, <laughs> she had asked earlier, was, is there access to the park from the school directly into the park? So I think there are a few um, different questions. I can answer the first question about um, the just emergency access from the public right of way, perhaps. And then perhaps Sean can um, tackle questions that relate to emergency evacuation of students and the school's plans with that, as well as the question about the park. Um, so staff has reviewed uh, the plan with both the fire department and the police department. Um, and both departments are confident that they can um, achieve emergency access even through congestion. Um, this is something that they're both uh, tasked with doing on a daily basis through different traffic conditions. Um, they're confident that they can have traffic move to the sides of the streets. Um, and if, if needed, um, could, the site could also be accessed by foot by the police department, um, but there were no concerns with emergency access from the city's perspective. Thank you. So Sean or Kartek, yeah, yeah thanks. I, I, might, I might just say um, with respect to uh, the, when children or, or families are arriving or departing, um, if, if there is what, what doesn't exist now, but there will be on-site capacity for anywhere from 100 to 125 cars, both in terms of parking as well as queuing. Um, so with respect to um, Balboa, um, the, the police department will be able to shuttle cars in to create flow within the public right of way. Also, if there were an emergency on campus with the operational folks who are directing traffic, 
um, for Stratford on site, along with the police department, will be able to release traffic as well. And if that needs to be done on an expedited basis into the public right of way, the police department obviously can do that. With respect to Stratford's own plans, though, a um, couple of things. First, Stratford at all its campuses, and this one will, will not be any different, creates a very robust emergency plan, uh, preparedness plan, and that includes uh, written plans in each classroom, testing with not only faculty, um, but drills with students, um, parent information as well. That actually has to be done for preschools uh, pursuant to state licensing. And that's actually something that the fire marshal and the uh, police department will need to be involved in as well through the review process. Um, we have not you know, created the full extent of that plan today, um, but we'll obviously be doing that before opening. Um, and um, it will be coordinated with public safety officials as is the case on all of the campuses. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions or comments from the commission? No, I have, I have a few. So if nobody else is going to go, I'll go ahead and I, I had one remark. I mean, I, my comments were largely addressed in the architectural review meeting. I know we did briefly touch on um, the question of, of to what degree traffic could be reduced by incentivizing carpooling. And I believe at the time there was a, sort of a, a mention that that was included in the environmental review, that something of that sort was planned. I just wondered whether it had been any further developed, whether there would be sort of an actual financial incentive for parents to bring multiple children or, or any other details. Um, yes, so I can answer that. Um, condition of approval number 15 um, includes TDM measures. Um, there weren't significant VMT impacts, but this was included in the environmental review um, as an improvement measure and um, it's made mandatory by staff taking it on as a condition of approval. That includes um, a school pool program, which would encourage families to carpool to reduce vehicle trips. Um, transit and biking subsidy program for staff, and then also an emergency ride home program for staff, um, which is meant to incentivize uh, employees to take public transit to work. Okay, Commissioner Harmon, does that does that help to answer your question? Yep. Okay, thank you. Okay, so if no other, other commissioners have questions, I'll, I'll start my little list. Okay. Um, a couple of questions. Um, well, I guess while, while we're on the, the topic of, of parking and um, transportation, just wanted to come back to the comments that uh, Michael Fitzgerald had, had mentioned. Um, it, it's my, well, I guess I should start with a question, which is, um, when the school was operating as El Crystal School, how many parking spaces were available on campus at that time? I believe there were 11, and those are only located at those three dead ends. They almost look like they're part of the public right of way, but they are um, private property. So it was 11 for both for uh, parent parking and for staff parking? Yes. Wow. Okay. And then now we have a total, I'm sorry, what was the total with um, the staff parking lot and the... There's 112 parking spaces total. Wow. So I'm, I'm going, I'm not a traffic engineer, but I'm going to presume that most of the people who had been parking on Santa Lucia and on surrounding side streets probably won't find the need to do that quite as much anymore. Okay. Correct. All right. That's, that's sounds sensible to me. Um, and uh, as far as uh, crosswalks, I, maybe people will just be dropped off directly on campus, but um, the addition of crosswalks and everything like that, that can be facilitated in the traffic advisory committee. Is that? Yes, that's, the, that's correct. Given the age of these students, all student, unless they're, they happen to live in the neighborhood and are being walked in by parents, all students are planned to be dropped off in that parking lot. Okay. Um, and then I don't think that there's any, we, we could not place any conditions upon the applicant to say limit their student numbers in the beginning and ramp up. That seems like that would not be within our. Um, 
I think they are naturally planning on doing that um, just because they just business wise, I don't think they can get to full enrollment on day one. Um, I do think that will naturally occur. The total number of students, the max is um, conditioned by a condition of approval. Yes, so so I was I was guessing as I was reviewing this that the numbers that are mentioned in, in these reports are would would operate as a maximum, <clears throat> and um, it would just naturally when you start with day one you bring in some students from the other campuses, but it takes a while for uh, the school to take root and for for families to begin coming. It takes a number of years to to get to to full occupancy. That may you never totally know in terms of what the enrollment is going to be. We're in a very unique time. Obviously, students will be coming um, from uh, the other campus initially, although that is not enough to to fill the entire campus. Um, and uh, you know, as a as a practical matter, um, it does take a, a a few years to to get up in. So that will allow some time for. Um, parent education, and also I would just say with private schools, um, especially with, pre with preschools, um, we, we can ensure that parents will not be parking in the neighborhood and dropping children off um, for a preschool. Um, they are required by their arrangement with the school to park in the parking lot and walk their children in. Okay. Thank you. I, I hope that helps to answer his questions, and um, that was great. Um, and then I have a couple questions, um, just some uh, questions regarding more the um, the proposed foot and pedestrian traffic around the parking lot and the drop-off zone. Um, as I was looking at it, I was I was trying to follow the path that the students would take to get from either a parking space or from the drop drop-off zone to a sidewalk um, and up to their classrooms. And I was wondering if you might be able to kind of take that, take me through that because uh, I wasn't seeing, it wasn't super clear to me uh, what the path of travel was gonna be. Sure, I can do that. Um, and the applicant is also welcome to chime in on this, but they'll actually, there's a dash line here. I too had questions about that when I first reviewed the plan. Um, so um, they will actually be entering from the parking lot through this play area Okay. and then around and end this way. So they enter the building, was that through, they'll obviously come through the, the playground area, but what part of the building do they enter through? So there is a door right here. I see. And okay. that's actually where um, many would enter. And there's an alternate path also um, through this direction that where they'd enter through a lobby. Okay, okay. And um, also it, it wasn't super clear to me in the plans and in the renderings, it looked as though it didn't exist, but is there gonna be an elevated curb for the drop-off area? Because I was concerned that if the kids were just hopping off onto asphalt, that there may be some uh, confusion about car space versus people space. Um, could the applicant answer that question? Perhaps Kartik? Kartik can do that. So, uh, if you see, I don't have access to the cursor, but if you see where uh, uh, Kelly was just pointing to the hatched area that takes you to the curb mm -hmm. and drop-off is, when the drop-off happens, there are no cars parked where the student would get off. And so you would, you would come directly uh, along the hatched pathway, get onto a ramp, which uh, would lead you to the play area that Kelly was just talking about. I, so the, the path is uh, is created for safe walkway to the play area and then enter the building. I see. So so just to clarify, the area that's hatched, yes, there will be during drop off time. Those spaces will be um, off limits that will be included in the drop off zone. That's correct. So those spaces would not be occupied by cars. Okay. Faculty parks on the upper parking lot off of Anza Way. Okay. And so those spaces stay open. So there's a very clear cut drop off. And at any place where parents are parking into the parking lot, they would get on the hatched area and then get directly onto the sidewalk, which is which has ramps that would lead you to the play area and eventually into the building. 
Okay, good. So there, there is a sidewalk. And That's correct. Yeah, we are, we are creating an entire sidewalk. Oh, there you go, all along that path uh, that would traverse up and it's ADA compliant uh, and it's wide enough for, for parents and uh, okay. students to be dropped off. That's great. Thank you for, for clarifying that. I was just really trying to figure out where the little feet were going to be and I figured it out. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, and then one question is, I saw a detail in, I, I can't recall which page it was, but there was a detail for a chain link fence and for a chain link uh, gate. And I was wondering where those were going to be located. And I, and I ask because if, if you've toured any of the schools in San Bruno, uh, the ones that are a little bit shabbier and the ones that are a little bit sadder, chain link is a part of that equation. And I think that I, I hear chain link and I bristle a bit. So I just wanted to, to understand how that was gonna be included in the project. So Kelly, do you mind if I? Yeah, Kartik, I think it'd be good if you'd answer that. Right. So the fences that face the public right away are all wrought iron fences. The fences that face the park are going to be a vinyl coated black chain link fence. So it's not your standard galvanized chain link fence that we are proposing. The tendency with a black coated vinyl fence lasts longer and they tend to disappear because they are black in color. So that's what we proposed for the fence that would be facing the park. Um, how much of that fence is going to be visible with the plantings that are going to be adjacent to them? Most of the planting mm -hmm. on the west side of the property is on the inside of the fence. When it faces the park, we have a, there you go, we have a significant, significant amount of fence, uh, um, sorry, landscaping, which is outside the fence. So wherever we have the park setting, we have a lot of landscaping along with trees that we've added to help with the screening of the fence and the retaining wall. And that's the, the entire length that faces the park. Okay, so there will be plantings both on the, on the property that screen the fence from people who eyes that are on the property. And then also it sounds like there will be some, uh, maybe the existing uh, greenery that will already be there on the park side. That's that's correct. We we've added uh, quite a few landscaping on the park side, which is outside the fence, uh, and that was because there was concern with few of the neighbors on screening as much as possible of the retaining wall. Yeah. Um, I don't know how my fellow commissioners feel about it. I. I I'm still not super excited about the idea of a chain link fence, regardless of its coding. Um, I know that um, graffiti and things like this are, are a consideration for sure, but I do know that um, this is, uh, the, the park really is a gem for our city. And we've, we were also super excited um, and anticipating our new recreation and aquatic center that is, um, that's going to be built to a remarkable standard. And I just, I don't want there to be an ugly backside to this that uh, isn't harmonizing well with our park. Any other commissioners have any feelings about this? Through the chair? Yeah. I, I agree with you. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, being on that site, um, I'm trying to visualize the new beautiful recreation park that we're going to have and how that's going to be adjacent and visible from, from there. It really was difficult to even see El Crystal. You had to make effort to look at it. Um, I don't know what the other side of a, of a black link fence, black link fence would look like. Um, but I would absolutely would like the guarantee that that it really has either shrubs in front of it, so it's not visible. Um, that it, it that it truly uh, does not does not minimize the beauty uh, for our park. 
because those pets can start to look um, old and weary. Yeah. Uh, through the chair? They build a hedge there. Oh. You know, they build a, some kind of a hedge and can, you know, uh, it grows quickly. It can, it can happen. Thank you. Commissioner Harmon? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I don't really see this as a reason to hold up the, the project or, or object oh, no. to their designs. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm just looking um, at satellite views of the park and I'm fairly sure we have a pretty substantial galvanized chain link uh, backstop to the baseball diamond there. I mean, so I, it's, it doesn't seem like a substantial change. I mean, this area, you know, it already, we've already got a chunk of chain link fence right in the area that they're proposing to add this that will, and this is gonna be less visible than that because it'll be screened by the, the, the plantings that where they're moving the fence away from the property line and putting in the, the trees and shrubs um, shown in the, the diagram that's, that's displayed right now. Through the chair, I just really want to communicate that by no means where I would think of holding up the project because of the comment at all. So just, just for clarification. Absolutely, I agree. Sorry, through the, through the chair, um, there is a huge difference in the regular galvanized uh, chain link fence and uh, the coated, plastic coated one, either in green or black, it looks tremendously uh, much better. Uh, and also the, co the posts are usually powder coated in the same color. So it's, it's a vast difference to just the, the regular old galvanized chain link. Hey, thank you. Yes, please. So, um, I, I agree with um, with uh, Commissioner Morgan regarding the the uh, vinyl coated fence. A a vinyl coated black fence, especially surrounded by so much vegetation, is going to be in the shade most of the time. It will tend to disappear. If that, if if you know the the alternative, it was you know, to to do you know a wrought iron fence or something that's more um, more pleasing standing on its own. You're going to see that fence. So that fence will be absolutely visible no matter how much you plant in front of it, and it's going to be visible from you know, from far away. Whereas a a, a black a chain link fence would tend to kind of disappear into the background. That's my. If I may interject, uh, I, I totally agree with the commissioner's views on this. Uh, the, the beauty about the vinyl coated black chain link fence is the fact that the fabric is transparent. So the, the reason the fence disappears is that in a normal wrought iron fence, you will see a lot of the pickets. On a normal vinyl coated chain link fence, you only see the posts and the fabric that's in between the posts disappears. The fact that we are adding landscaping to the outside of that, if you are in the park and looking back at the property, you have enough barrier that you won't see it. So our goal was to have a fence, but make it disappear so that it feels like there is no fence. And I assure you that it, once you see it in place with the landscaping, you'll be pleased with the outcome. Thank you, that, um, that satisfies my concerns. Okay, that's that's all that I had. Thank you. Uh, any other comments or questions? No. Um, well, in that case, um, we could uh, entertain a motion. Uh, oh, oh, I was going to move that we close public hearing. Uh, I I believe it's closed. Oh, oh, oh. okay. Uh, I guess I can move then that we uh, approve use permit 19023 and architectural review permit 2004 based on findings one to 10 subject to the attached conditions of approval and adopting the, uh, oh, uh, I, uh, what was IS? Uh, mitigated negative declaration. Right. So mitig I remember the mitigated ne negative declaration part <laughs> and mitigation monitoring and reporting program. All right. I'll second. Okay, then uh, we can have a roll call vote. Pamela, can you facilitate that? Sure. Commissioner Hamilton? Aye. Commissioner Harmon? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Morgan? Aye. 
Vice Chair Biasati. Aye. Chair Lathin. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, so the item has been approved. And is there a 10 day waiting period, an appeal period? There is. Okay. All right, so um, any questions then in that appeal period can be directed to, uh, to Pamela, is that correct? That's correct. So for okay. any member of public who would like to file an appeal of the decision, uh, please do so within 10 days of this decision. Okay, thank you, Pamela. Uh, in that case, much. we'll move on to um, public hearing item 4B, which is 250 Cortland Drive. And I believe that we have Commissioner Morgan that's going to be departing for a little while. Yes, I'm going to recuse myself. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Morgan, I'm going to remove you from the room now since you're recused, thank you. All right, Melissa, you let me know when we're ready to go. You are ready to go. Okay, thank you. Um, so for the 250 Cortland Drive, we are ready for a staff report. Hi, uh, this is Michael Smith, uh, senior planner. Can everyone see me? No. Michael, your audio was also pretty low, just FYI. Okay. Now you sound better. Okay. Um, it might be a lack of uh, internet capability, but uh, for some reason my video is not coming up. Should I just go ahead? I think so, unless, unless there's an obvious cure, I think we'll just listen. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, good evening, commissioners, Michael Smith, planning department staff. Um, you have before you 250 Cortland Drive. This is a request for a use permit to establish a childcare center for up to 44 children to operate from an existing church known as the San Bruno Chinese Church. Um, there is no expansion proposed with the new use. The applicant is proposing to operate the childcare center within a portion of the existing church on the ground floor. This includes a 2,200 square foot uh, of indoor area, which consists of six classrooms and two bathrooms. The lease also includes a thousand square feet of fenced outdoor area. And also another 1,200 square feet of outdoor uh, playground area as well. And this would be for a maximum enrollment of 44 children and a total of six teachers. The proposed drop-off hours for the use are between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. And the pickup hours are between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, the applicant proposes to reduce traffic congestion in and around the site by limiting the number of drop-offs and pickups for each one-hour window. The proposed child care center would utilize the existing parking area closest to the entry for drop-off and pickup. So a little bit about the property itself. Um, the subject site, uh, 250 Cortland, measures 3.9 acres in area and is currently improved with an existing two-story church. It is uh, over 14,000 square feet in total area. The subject property lies between the former Crestmore High School site and the Unipero Serra Freeway, also known as Highway 280, with driveway access from Cortland Drive. There are 92 parking spaces on the site. On the top floor, the church is comprised of the sanctuary, five classrooms, a choir room, two bathrooms, auxiliary and circulation space, and administrative space, including four offices. The church currently holds services for up to 234 people in the sanctuary. And the facility was originally constructed in the 60s with the original plans dated 1967 prior to the requirement for obtaining a use permit in the R1 district. There was a subsequent conditional use permit for this facility granted by the Planning Commission in 1996 through UP95-07 and AR95-02. That allowed an 8,939 square foot addition to the original structure. And that added the sanctuary that you see today and the cafeteria below that. 
So a little about the beyond just the church itself, um, it should be noted that a similar use, a child care center, was um, granted a conditional use permit for the site in 1994. The use permit was granted to Early Learning Institute, allowing the establishment of a child care center for up to 40 children within the existing church. However, after its original establishment, this use vacated the site several years ago and the use was discontinued. The applicant proposes to reestablish a similar child care use, but with an increase in, in the number of maximum capacity from 40 to 44 children. A conditional use permit is required to establish a child care center within the R1 district. The purpose of the conditional use permit is to allow the proper integration into the community of uses which may be suitable only in a specific location in a zoning district and to impose require, imp requirements to ensure the protection of adjacent properties and the public interest. So staff has evaluated the proposed use and determined the following. So regarding the neighborhood, the subject site is located at the end of Cortland Drive across from the former Crestmore High School and is located approximately 220 feet away and slightly downhill from the nearest single family home. Given these facts, there should not be any significant noise or visual impacts from the proposed child care operation to the adjacent residents located on Cortland Drive. Cortland Drive would experience a slight increase in additional traffic uh, or additional vehicle trips associated with the use. However, the increase would be minimal and less than the amount considered to be an impact pursuant to CEQA. Uh, now, a little bit about the church itself. Uh, staff has determined that the proposed use is compatible to the existing church operation and proposes no further impact to church functions. In reviewing the use permit conditions of approval that govern the current church operation, there are no conditions of approval stipulated through UP95 or AR95 um, that would prohibit the proposed use on the site. The church owners have indicated that the site is seldom in operation during the weekday hours and the child care center would provide better utilization of the building and augment the church's needed income. Operating a child care out of a facility uh, out of a church is actually a common practice for these reasons. With respect to parking, um, there are, are currently 92 parking spaces um, on the site. Staff, staff calculated the required parking spaces for the child care center based upon the updated parking requirements of section 12.100 for place and for places of worship which require uh, one parking space for every 300 square feet of floor area, which results in a net requirement of 49 parking spaces for the church use. Uh, child care centers require two spaces per classroom, uh, which is a, a requirement of 12 parking spaces for the proposed uh, child care use. Furthermore, not, there should not be any overlap between the child care use itself and the church. Uh, as I said earlier, the church primarily does its functions on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays. So the current 92 parking spaces that are on site are more than sufficient to, um, for both uses on the site. Though the proposed childcare use wouldn't have um, any effects on the church or the nearby neighbors, um, staff was concerned that its location near a major freeway might expose the children to an area with poor air quality and excessive noise. To assess these impacts, the city retained environmental consultant performed an air quality and acoustic analysis of the site. The analysis was prepared um, and is attached to the staff report as appendix, um, and those are contained in appendices A and B of attachment E. Um, this is the CEQA categorical exemption memorandum. And then the, this environmental analysis found that the air quality and noise impact imposed on the project at the site within the, was found to be within the normally acceptable range for land use compatibility. So therefore we don't, we don't see any issues uh, as far as the air quality and the noise um, on uh, the sensitive receptors that will be using this site. 
Uh, meeting notices were sent out to property owners within 300 feet of the subject site. Um, in response to that notice, uh, staff did speak with one person uh, today, a neighbor who expressed concern about the future development of Crestmore High School site, but did not express any specific concerns related to the proposed project. Uh, in conclusion, uh, the operation of a child care center use out of a church is a common practice and represents a negligible increase of intensity at the site, which is mostly dormant during the week. The project would benefit San Bruno, which suffers from a lack of affordable child care services, as proven from a recent study prepared by First Five San Mateo County, which was sponsored by the San Bruno Community Foundation. And for these reasons, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission approve the use permit 19-024 based on findings one through three and, and conditions of approval one through 12 as contained in the staff report. And this concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you, Michael. Um, does the commission have any clarifying questions for Michael? I didn't really. Oh. To the chair. So um, uh, the, the the plan that uh, we reviewed in the packet uh, was uh, pretty comprehensive. We thank you for that. Um, there seems to be plenty of parking on the site. There's plenty, uh, uh, it, but it does make the the uh, packet does make reference to a, a pick up pick up drop off area. But it wasn't really clear to me what the plan was for circulation and i'm not worried necessarily about you know cars backing up into the neighborhood or anything like that given these volumes but i'm just more concerned with there being a a concrete plan for um how that's going to work just to keep the kids safe so is there any are there any diagrams or any way that that, that can be enumerated to us that we know what the what the drop-off plan is going to look like for the kindergarten students who would be dropped off picked up and dropped off rather than the and, and we don't necessarily need to address the preschool students who would be parked and walked in. So um, the plan, it, it calls for the applicant submitting a plan to the city, to staff for review. Um, there's an area right outside the entrance um, to the bottom half of this facility. Um, and I can bring that up for you in a, in a moment here. Um, but there's a number of parking spaces there, approximately 20. It is anticipated that most of, most people that will be using this will park there and walk their kids in, inside um, as opposed to, so, and then there's also a lot of space um, getting to and from the site to, that would allow the, the circulation. And so that doesn't really conflict with the, the parking area where the people would park for the pickup and drop off. So, but let me show you. Okay, sure. Well, that's while that's coming up, I it, it could be that I misinterpreted it, but it seemed like the the plan was that kindergarten students would be dropped off, meaning car pauses, door opens, kid piles out, and walks into the school, and, and parent drives away, um, and that the and then it, it would be a park and walk in for for. Um, no, uh, so is this is all so this is all park and walk in. Yes, this is all park and walk in. That that addresses my question. Then okay, I, I uh, yeah, it, that's that makes perfect sense. The, yeah, the the word pick up drop off area this was what threw me, so I apologize. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Herman. Did you have a question as well? Yeah, I was uh. I believe it was said that this was in, in use this way with like 10% fewer students for a number of years. And I just, I mean, did we have any record of any issues with this use? That seems relevant. Uh, no, there, like, there were no uh, code enforcement issues regarding the previous use that yeah, operated no, on no, the site. Yeah. No code enforcement, no complaints. So yeah, I mean, that seems like that it seems like a reasonable yeah. yeah, it seems like we can hardly complain about returning it to the same use. To the chair? Yes. I was on the commission when this came about, uh, the school, 
and uh, I had the opportunity to walk through the whole uh, premise, and it was a really good use and, and a good. Um, they did a really good job of providing all the components for it. Uh, I wasn't aware when it actually didn't operate at the school any longer. But as a uh, point of clarification, when drop off and pick up, this school is for children 18 months old to five. So they're preschool, they're considered um, infant toddler through preschool. Infant toddler is a child from infancy through 18 months as a toddler, and then preschool is from uh, 30 months old to five years old, and you go on to kindergarten. So they are required by state licensing to be brought in, signed in, and walked out. So they cannot go on their own. So although safety is still important, they don't have the same drop off, run off, and fend for yourself kind of thing. So um, parents have to go in uh, with, with the parents. It's a licensing requirement. What I, they were a licensed um, childcare in the past, and all childcare centers need to be licensed. I didn't ask Liz Stratford, uh, that question. I won't bring all those pieces up, but I did. I forgot to ask that question. And so in preschool, 18 months to five-year-olds, they have to be licensed. There's no option. Whereas if you add, add elementary, there is an option. So um, just as a point of information, just because uh, not always does everybody know all the specifics in each area. This is one area that I feel pretty, pretty confident in that I, that I know the rules pretty well because I've had to comply with those rules for 45 years. So um, I certainly, this project is really presented well and to only add four children is really uh, minimal. Okay, thank you. Any other commissioners have any clarifying questions? No, okay, uh, thank you. Oh, and pardon me. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. pardon me. Um, on the application uh, from the project statement that the applicant uh, filled out, he put in the pickup window 3 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm sure it's just a typo, but I thought I would just make a note that that should be 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. of the pickup. It's very small, but it's a point of reference. Thank you. Okay, in that case, um, if there are no other questions for staff, uh, we will open the public hearing. Uh, Melissa, are there any members of the public who have the who have their hand raised and would like to speak on this item? I see no hands raised. Okay. Give them a moment just in case they change their minds. Okay. Is the applicant there? Um is the applicant Michael Shen on this one? Yes. Yes, he I'll is. Bring yeah. him in just one moment. Well, where'd he go? There he is. Okay, I'm bringing him in the room. Just one moment, I'm trying to get him unmuted. This worked earlier, so <laughs> hopefully he will be able to come back. There he is. Hello. There you are. Hi. Hi. Thank you for coming. And there thank are you. no uh, hands. There are no hands raised for public comment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening, Commissioner. And uh, I really appreciate Michael are pre uh, present with nice staff report. And I really appreciate the comment from uh, commissioners. And um, and I really uh, thank. Uh, the planning department for the city to host this uh, wonderful and smooth Zoom meeting. It's really efficient. Thank you very much. The first time I attend this uh, city meeting and uh, really smooth. Thank you. It's, I uh, think it's too. Uh, so uh, with that, I would like to start my uh, short presentation. Um, um, uh, I'm sorry to like interrupt. To... I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Shen, but um, Chair Lithin, we should actually um, close the public hearing before the applicant begins his okay. presentation since you opened it. Okay, let's go ahead and close that up. Um, would anybody like to make a motion to close? I move we close the public hearing. I'll second. Okay, uh, in that case, I think we can do a voice, a voice vote. 
Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, then in that case, uh, the public hearing is closed. And uh, please, uh, Michael Shen, if you could share your report with us, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Um, uh, tonight, I'd like to present to you our uh, new school, new preschool project and like your support. And we have been operating our large family daycare for more than five years with uh, excellent reputation in our community. Our daycare uh, received five star ratings in Yelp for the last three years and uh, was highly recommended by 22 families. Um, we provide Montessori education to our children using uh, both English and Chinese. And we received tremendous amount of recognition from families who speak very high of our daycare. Um, at this moment, we have 22 children on the waiting list. And 16 of these 20 children are from San Bruno. And we also have three families uh, who have their first child in our daycare now. They already mentioned, they just have their second baby in the last year. They already mentioned uh, to us, they want their second child to be in our daycare. However, as a large family daycare, we can only accommodate 12 children. So we've been stressed out with this and uh, we receive calls frequently from neighbors and even work, uh, some working, uh, some neighbor knock our door. They just leave several uh, steps away. They want to have their baby in our daycare. So, um, so we cannot meet a significant uh, childcare service need from our neighborhood. So with that, that's why we, uh, we discuss with our church and so hopefully we get this project with your support, we can uh, uh, help relieve the pressure uh, from our neighborhood. Uh, my, our daycare currently is operated by my wife, Rachel. Um, she was here sitting beside me just a moment ago. However, she was seven months uh, pregnant and she's sitting here for hours <laughs> and she feel uh, very uh, you know, uncomfortable. I suggest her to lie on the bed. So, uh, so uh, she's, she's also very impressed by the setup of the Zoom meeting. Unfortunately, she, she feel uncomfortable. She wants to take a break. So uh, she cannot join us. Uh, she did excellent job to running the, uh, our daycare. And uh, she had a master degree in early childhood education and she also hold a Montessori certificate. She have our director certificate for preschool. And also she have certificate for teaching both English and Chinese. Her strong credentials enable her to create exciting learning environment for our uh, daycare using Montessori method. And our daycare teach languages, including uh, English and Chinese. And we also teach mathematics, art and craft, music and social skills. Um, as Michael already mentioned, uh, he already uh, did excellent job to introduce the project to you. Uh, I would like to um, finish my presentation with, uh, with a quotation from a parent who wrote on Yap. Here's what or she comment. Uh, Rachel is smart, caring, enthusiastic, motherly, and just all around nice person. I can tell she really loves what she does. My daughter has been here for six months now. I can truly say she by far is the best I ever see. So with that, I would like to close my short presentation and um, I'm ready for any questions. Thank you very much. And th thank you uh, to you and also to your wife for, for being here. I'll, I'm sorry that it took so long to get to you. I hope that she uh, feels well. And um, we really appreciate the, the, uh, the gift that she's giving to these kids and also to our community. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, do any commissioners have uh, questions for Michael? Okay. I don't have a question, I just have a comment. Um, uh, 
thank you for uh, provide for working to provide these extra services for our kids in San Bruno and always um, always happy to see the expansion of any business in uh, within city limits so um, I want to welcome this project thank you thank you very much through the chair yes oh, my oh, I thought I was muted for a second sorry uh, mr. Chen I just have a question were you there at the time that it was the school was operating in the past were yes greater I, I remember when we have this uh, larger license approved you are in the uh, committee uh, commission you're also commissioner five yes, years ago correct. I that's remember correct. Yeah. Yep, that thank was you for your support 90s. all the time <laughs> yeah back in the 90s and uh, is there something that you would do differently this year that this time that you wouldn't have done? I mean, you closed for a reason. Um, oh, uh, sorry, I misunderstood. Um, you mean the last preschool. I was not involved in that business. I heard that's because the, the owner retired. Okay. Okay. I was just interested to you know. Yes, I did go to your, your church when it first opened up. I was there. Oh, thank you. And that's when I, when I met you. Um, but I was interested to know if you were part of the school when it was there in the past and you answered my question. So I thank you that you now have a large family daycare and is it also in San Bruno? Yeah, it is. It's in two, uh, 260 down Norte Drive. Oh, around the corner from me. Yeah, I, I remember when we applied for the license and you give us your support. That's uh, five years ago. So I wish you the very best. Yeah. Thank you very much. Congratulations and moving forward. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Yes. So I say I, I think it's lovely to have a Montessori school in town. I, I have been exposed to you know kids in my family taking Montessori classes and really and really enjoying the method, the the work as they say, so I think that's great. And, and congratulations on expanding your own family. Thank you very much. Okay. It sounds like that is everything from the commission for right now. And um, we've already closed our public hearing. So um, if the commission doesn't have any further questions or points of discussion, we could entertain a motion. Through the chair. Yes. I mean, the Planning Commission approved use permit 19-024 uh, based on the findings of facts 1 through 3 and conditions of approval 1 through 12. Okay. Is there a second? All second. Okay. Uh, Pamela, can you facilitate a roll call vote, please? Of course. Commissioner Hamilton? Aye. Commissioner Harmon? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Morgan. Commissioner Morgan is oh, that's right. He's recused. Sorry. Uh, Vice Chair Biasati. Aye. Commissioner uh, Chair Lithant. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. One For clarification, I do need to say motion carries um, oh, five to zero me. to one with um, Commissioner Morgan recused. I'm sorry. I'm a nerd about this stuff. I, I'll, I'll leave now. No, no, no. Thank you, Melissa. Good to have you there. We're learning from you, Melissa. This is very valuable. Uh, and, and through the chair, <laughs> through the chair, I just wanted to apologize for the technical difficulties with my video. I'm not quite sure what's happening, but Michael's well, here. I can I can contest. He's like next to me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, we miss seeing your face, but but thank <laughs> you. Don't worry about it at all. <laughs> Okay, well then in that case, the motion carries and there's a 10 day appeal period and any questions can be directed to Pamela Wu. Uh, chair Lathan, I was corrected um, that the chair, uh, the appeal should be filed with the city clerk, but we'll be more than happy to facilitate. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Good luck and thank you again for, uh, for helping the kids in San Bruno, this is great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so that is the end of our um, our public hearings. I suppose we can bring uh, Commissioner Morgan back into the mix. I did already. He's in the room. Okay, welcome back. I've returned from the wilderness. <laughs> Good. Welcome back. Um, 
So in that case, we uh, move on to section five. This is new business. And we have uh, 5A is uh, 500 Sylvan Avenue. And uh, staff, if you could let us know what your report is. Yes, definitely. Thank you and good evening. My name is Matt Newbomber, Associate Planner with the Community and Economic Development Department. And the last item uh, before the Planning Commission tonight is a request for a one-year permit extension of a plan development permit, architectural review permit, and conditional use permit for a nine-unit multifamily residential project located at 500 Sylvan Avenue. Um, the project site is located on the northwest corner of Sylvan Avenue and Green Avenue and is located in the transit corridor plan area. Uh, the overall lot size is approximately 7,300 square feet and it's currently developed with a commercial structure that has remained vacant for several years. Uh, the applicant's plan is to demo that existing structure and construct a new three-story multifamily development in its place consisting of nine residential units. And I would like to point out these would be rental or apartment units and a total of 14 parking spaces. Uh, the project was previously reviewed by the Architectural Review Committee and Planning Commission and ultimately approved by the City Council. Uh, the entitlements approved by the City Council included a zoning district amendment, a plan development permit, an architectural review permit, and a conditional use permit. The associated ordinance for the zoning amendment went into effect July 11th, 2019. There is a condition of approval that states the plan development permit, conditional use permit, and architectural review permit shall expire if a building permit is not obtained within, a one, within one year of the effective date of the associated ordinance. And again, that effective date of the associated ordinance was July 11th, 2019. Therefore, a building permit must be issued by July 11th, 2020. I would like to point out that the San Bruno Municipal Code allows for the Planning Commission to renew planning permits for a period of up to one year. Essentially, a renewal acts as an extension of the permit expiration date for an additional period of time to allow the project applicant time to obtain the building permit and complete substantial work on reliance on that building permit. The Planning Commission has approved renewals in the past for larger projects such as the recently completed um, Plaza project or Aperture uh, located at 406 418 San Mateo Avenue. Um, additionally, the Planning Commission recently approved an extension for the approved development located at 111 San Bruno Avenue West. An application for renewal was filed by the property owner with the city on May 26, 2020. Uh, specifically, the applicant has requested a one year renewal of the associated planning permits. The primary reason for the renewal request is to further coordinate with city staff during the building plan check review process. And I would like to point out that significant process, uh, progress has been made uh, to date. The building permit was uh, initially submitted in December 2019 and the city has been actively processing that permit since that time. The applicant recently resubmitted revised building permit plans in June 2020, earlier this month, which are actively being reviewed by all of the reviewing departments. However, based on the circumstances, the submitted building permit would not be issued in time before the expiration date. Um, the applicant has indicated that a reasonable target date for building permit issuance is later this year in September 2020, uh, which staff agrees with. Uh, staff is supportive of the one-year extension and finds that this would greatly improve the appearance of the existing lots and would also provide much needed housing in the community. Uh, therefore, staff recommends that the Planning Commission adopt the attached resolution, which is resolution 2020-05, uh, thereby granting the one-year extension. Uh, this concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any clarifying questions that you may have. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Matt. Um, does the commission have any uh, clarifying questions for staff? Through the chair? Yes. Matt, would this be the same as a continuance? Well, essentially, you, uh, the Planning Commission is being asked to um, extend the life of the plan development permit, architectural review permit, and conditional permit, conditional use permit for, in a, uh, for a one-year period. Um, so you would be um, extending the life of those three entitlements, which would allow the applicant an additional one-year period to obtain the building permit. Yeah, I understand that. How is that different from a continuance? Just my own interest 
is it like a, a continuance would be for a specific date and this is basically giving it just a one year yes yeah, so the so the, the, the the planning you would not be continuing the item so uh um, typically a continuance is when uh, a specific subject matter requires further research by staff okay. and then That's the planning right. mission would continue it to a date specific. Of course, that makes sense. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Um, is the applicant here? The, the property owner and the project architect um, should be in the meeting uh, and they, they, they should be um, available to answer any questions that you may have, but they, they are not present, planning on presenting to the commission okay. tonight. Okay, just wanted to make sure that they were, knew that they were invited to, to share if they wanted to. Correct. Okay. I right. have brought um, applicant Suresh Gandhi into the room. If you have any questions for him, he's currently muted, but we can unmute him. Okay, welcome, Mr. Gandhi. We're glad to see you back. Um, we're, um, I'm personally uh, excited to hear that progress has been made and you guys have been working towards getting this going. And um, yeah, excited to hear about that. I think he's getting unmuted right now. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> we're working. Hello, Mr. Gandhi, you're still muted. There you go. Good? Yes. Very good. Hi, Mr. Gandhi. Thank you and, and welcome. I, I, um, I have a feeling you didn't hear what I last said, but I was pleased when we saw this report um, come in that you guys have been making good progress towards uh, seeing this come to fruition. Finally, yes. <laughs> yes, it has been a long journey. Yes. Is there anything that you'd like to share about the project uh, before we open public comment? No, I think we, you know, we are, um, we got the comments, we replied to the city for the first comments and now in the city's hand to give us the response back, but looks like in a short window of time, we may not be able to complete um, the permit process. So we need to make sure we have an extension on hand, but our intention is to start as soon as we can get the permit and start this building going because it's costing me a lot of money every day I wait. You know. Okay. <laughs> well, very good. Um, uh, does the commission have any uh, questions for Mr. Gandhi? No. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, um, thank you all for your support and um, look forward to you know working with you again. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, in that case, um, we are able to take public comments. If there are any members of the public who'd like to speak on this item, uh, we, don't, we won't be opening a, a formal hearing, but um, any public comments we are available to take if Melissa sees any hands. I currently see no hands raised. Okay. All right, I'll give them a moment. But in, uh, in the event that there's none, we'll go ahead and close up that comment. I think we'll close the comment um, and bring the discussion back to the commission. Through the chair? Yes. So um, I think the, I think we all understand that the, pur the purpose of the one year life on these, um, on these permits is to make sure that that action takes place and that properties don't lay fallow. It's obvious that, that um, work and progress is being made here. And um, I completely support extending the lives of these, of these permits so we can continue the process. Great. Yes. I, I would assume that we, I mean, we would have had a month or so of delay just because of the crisis. So, I mean, it just seems entirely unobjectionable to add some time to the clock. Okay. Any other commissioners? Okay. Motion. I would love a motion. Okay. Uh, I move that the Planning Commission um, support uh, the, ex the request for a one year permit extension for permit renewal of the planned development permit uh, for sec 
section 12.128.020 of the San Bruno Municipal Code. I will second that. Okay, Pamela, can you facilitate a roll call vote, please? Of course. Commissioner Hamilton? Aye. Commissioner Harmon? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Morgan? Aye. Vice Chair Biasati? Aye. Chair Lathin? Aye. This time you do have a unanimous mo uh, motion passed. Okay, so we have to say that a motion carries. The motion carries. <laughs> Okay, motion carry either way works. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, and I think there's there's also a ten day appeal period on this. If I'm, I don't know how that all works. I believe there's a appeal period. Okay, all right. Then um, any any questions regarding that can be uh, directed to our city clerk. And uh, Mr. Gandhi, thank you so much. We're really excited to see this happen. Thank you, thank you all. Okay. Um, so then we'll move on to um, number six, items from staff. Yes, good evening, planning commissioners. All right, so a few things from me. Um, the first one, I would like to ask for any volunteer for the July 16 Architectural Review Committee. Um, just to give you a heads up, right now, I only have possibly one or two very minor project coming up, but in a case that we need to have a hearing, can I have a volunteer? I see a hand. Thank you, Mary Lou. Oh, thank you, Commissioner Morgan. Okay. Do I see a third hand? I'm thank sorry. you, Commissioner yeah. Harmon. Okay. So I have Commissioner Johnson, Morgan, and Commissioner Harmon. Thank we'll you very much. Touch. Are those at the same time as in the past, six o'clock? Yes, yeah, six o'clock, six o'clock. And we'll continue to inform you whether we will do Zoom meeting or some other hybrid. Thank you. Um, the next one that I have, which is not listed on the agenda, but it's a fun one. Uh, we were informed that this committee uh, needs to make a nomination to the Memorial Recognition Award Subcommittee. So I'll give you a little bit of background. Um, this year, um, the city would like to nominate David Nigel. He's the chair for the Bi uh, Bicycle Pedestrian Committee, BPAC, um, to receive the Extraordinary Service Award. In order for the award to be awarded, we actually need to have a committee. In order to have a committee, we need to have different participants from each committee. So we were tasked to make a nomination and I'll hand it over to the chair to take care of the rest. Okay, well, um, thank you, Pamela. This is a, a, an exciting committee uh, and an exciting purpose. And I, uh, if he is willing, would like to nominate Tom Hamilton to this position. I will accept, thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Um, do we need to do a roll call vote for this, Pamela? Or are we- Melissa, do you know? No, since this is a ceremonial, item it does not require a uh, formal roll call vote okay all right so i'll note that uh, commissioner hamilton has graciously accepted position thank you um and then there's just one minor um kind of an open discussion on our agenda typically we do not have a consent item portion um, I just kind of want to kind of bring it up to the commission. The item that you just considered, the time extension, is not a public hearing item. In the future, when we have more crowded agenda or more similar projects like this, you could take it on as a consent item. Uh, with the staff report and this and that, you don't have to open a public hearing. You could discuss, you know, briefly. So that is a possibility. If you look at a city council's agenda, um, certain items will go under the consent item. I just kind of want to put it out there. We don't want to do it because it's not something custom to the planning commission this time. So we went ahead and did a regular presentation with the staff report and put it under new business. Okay, thank you. Thank you for letting us know. That's a good thing to, to know that we have as an option. That's all sure. I have. Yes, Mary Lou? Well, that, she asked, just to make sure, I was wondering why you have that under new business versus having uh, having um, uh, public hearing item. Public hearing item. I, you answered my question. And I thought, hmm, here it is. Here's my agenda. Sorry, so many papers. So I thought, why wasn't that a four a four C versus it being a five A? 
it is specifically mm -hmm. stated in the code that this uh, to, for the commission to grant a time extension is not a public hearing item. And therefore we wanna make the distinction between four public hearing versus five new business. Mm, 30 years, I learned something new. Okay. Thank well, thank you, Pamela, for facilitating that. Um, we do have our second public comment. Uh, if that if that's everything, Pamela, is that everything you had? Okay. Um, so then we have our second uh, public comment opportunity. So if there are any members of the public who wanted to comment on any items that were not on the agenda, you are uh, welcome to do that now. Uh, Michelle, do you see any uh, members of the public who would like to speak, they can raise their hands. There are no hands raised. Okay. All right. Thank you, Melissa. So then, um, before we get to, but before we get to number eight, um, I just have a, a, a agenda question, and maybe it should have happened at the beginning. But um, there used to be an item for comments from committee members, and that disappeared last month, and it's not here again. I don't have any comments but I'm just wondering what happened, not this month, but I'm just wondering what happened to that item and why it was removed. I don't have an answer for you. I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have an answer possibly, Pamela, but I think she froze on us. Um, Darcy is connecting. <laughs> Pamela is stunned by the question. Can you repeat the question? Oh. Uh, I, uh, yeah. So the question was posed that um, normally on the planning commission agendas, there is a section for comments from commissioners and on last month's agenda and this month's agenda, that item is missing. And he was wondering if that is going to be returning or a reason for it being gone. That could be me overlooking. I will definitely look into it. And um, if that's a typo, I'll put it back on the next month's agenda. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. I don't, like I said, I don't have any comments for this month, but I just noticed that it was missing. Thank you. I have a quick answer. This, the bylaws, which I have here, don't refer to it in that exact language. It has items from members and then subcommittee reports. And we've typically been advised by the city attorney not to veer too much from that heading. Um, and then items for members would be specific items for, that we've agendized for conversation. So. And I, I also want to add on that note, um, part of the reason why we recommend, I mean, it's not that this is just a possibly a clerical error for that being removed. I don't think it's anything other than that. But if it's added back on just for this commission to know, if you are going to make any comments um, for comments from the commissioners, you should leave it to social or city events, um, something lighthearted. If you bring up like, oh, I want to discuss X, Y, or Z, and that happens to be city business, that would have to be agendized for you to bring it up. You would have to alert staff beforehand to say, I would like this on the agenda to discuss under comments from commissioners. Otherwise, um, it opens up a discussion that was not placed on the agenda previously, and then we'd have to cut it off so that it doesn't continue. So um, just to clarify that if, if that comes back, if you do have a comment, if the I always say the more generic, the better. Um, Little League signups or this Saturday, you know, something like that. Um, community related events. It's that's always the best types of topics. If you have something meatier to discuss that you would like to discuss, just send an email to staff before the agenda goes out saying you would like that on the agenda. Yes, but this month it was an oversight, so we apologize. Okay. We'll be back Thank next you. month. So save up your, your social light-hearted social event announcements for next month. <laughs> And, and reports about trainings that we go to, things like that. Yes, yes definitely. Yes. Actually, typically, we do agendize the training and sort of ask for a report out. Okay. And unfortunately, there hasn't been a lot of training. I feel like I saw an opportunity, and we'll certainly keep an eye out for virtual training. There's been some recently, um, and we'll report out. Okay. I have a quick lighthearted announcement, which is that um, Pamela and I are finishing a staff report item for next week's city council meeting to request $150,000 mm -hmm. in state planning grants um, that we've been working very hard on. And that would help initiate the housing element work, which is um, something that the city needs to get working on. Um, and the finishing work for the zoning code update to implement the general plan and TCP. So 
That's the announcement I have. Thank you. Thank you for the work on that. Okay. Well, it sounds like the that that portion will come back on the agenda uh, next time. And make sure that I apologize for the oversight. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hamilton, for, for pointing that out. Okay. In that case, we'll move on to number eight. Oh, Pamela, you're back, sort of. Okay, hi. Uh, in, well, and then we're going to adjourn. So the next planning commission meeting will be held on July 21, 2020 at 7 p.m. It's yet to be decided what format that meeting is going to be. So please check the city's website for details as they become available. The time is 8.55 p.m. and we are now adjourned. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Good night.